Testing, testing, testing. Testing, testing. I think it's coming out of the speaker. Good morning and welcome to worship. Let us worship God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad in it. Glad for God's good world, glad for life, 
and glad for each other. Glad for times of worship and glad for the times we serve together. Amen. Glad for the love of God who has made it all possible. So let us worship our Lord who died for our sins, but now he is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us pray. God of holy love, you have poured out living water in the gift of your son Jesus. Keep us close to him when the winds of adversity blow, and may we remain loyal to his leading so that we may never thirst for your love. May we live in your will and grow in thankfulness every day as we serve others in the name of our Savior, Christ the Lord, in whose name we pray, amen. time of confession, we need to remember that true forgiveness begins with repentance, turning away from our former ways. In order to become more like Jesus, we have to allow him to show us what aspects of our lives need to be changed. So we do that now as we confess, using the prayer in our bulletin, followed by our own individual silent confessions. Let us pray. Gracious Savior, we receive your love with gratitude, which you demonstrated by laying down your life for us. You have chosen us as your own, and called us to love one another as you have loved us. But we fall short of your desires for us. We cling in fear to the little we have, rather than laying it down so that the riches of love may fill us and throw through us. Pour out your spirit on us again, that we may give your love so fully that it will 
Hear the good news. As followers of Christ, we are Easter people, which means we are forgiven, freed, and grateful for God's goodness. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Our responsive reading today is Psalm 122, which is a song of joy sung by those who are grateful to be able to worship God in his house, just as we do today as well. Please join me in this reading. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem, built as a city that is bound firmly together. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For there the thrones for judgment were set up, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For the sake of my relatives and friends, I will say, peace be within you. Together. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. The scripture lesson comes to us from the book of Acts, the ninth chapter, 
beginning at verse 36. Hear the word of God. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. That is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. It happens to me a lot more frequently than I'd like. I get in my car and I start driving towards some destination, and before I know it, I'm halfway here to the church. (laughs) Has that ever happened to you? You drive someplace so frequently that without thinking about it, you just start driving there automatically? I did a quick count and multiplied the number of times that I have driven back and forth to the church in a week and multiplied that times the number of weeks Uh, I come here in a year and multiplied that times about 32 years, and I came up with about 15,000 times I've driven back and forth on Route 519 to this church. No wonder I drive here automatically. (laughs) You probably experience those kinds of things in your life as well. When you need a bowl, you just go to the cabinet and take it out. You need a spoon, you go to the drawer and pull it out. You don't stand there and think, now which cabinet are my bowls in, or which which of these drawers has my spoons in it? Repetition is helpful. Kids learn it at an early age when there's that favorite book that they like that they want you to read over and over again. Research from the University of Sussex in England has shown that repeating a story to a child helps them pick up vocabulary faster. They've postulated that the first time the child hears a story, they pick up on the general gist of it, but repeating it allows them to pay attention to more detail, including the vocabulary used, which begins to make better sense to them. So kids know instinctively that repetition can be helpful. Athletes use repetition to become better at their sport. I read that there are three stages for an athlete in their training. The first is the cognitive stage, where it's explained to them what they need to do in their sport. The second stage is associative, where they take that knowledge from here and the the way to do it that they've been taught, and they start to put the two together. And the third level is when they repeat that skill over and over again until, like me, driving my car, they just do it automatically. This is the autonomous stage. According to Jeffrey Huber, who wrote the book, Applying Educational Psychology in Coaching Athletes. He says, in this third stage, motor performance becomes largely automatic. Cognitive processing demands are minimal, and athletes are capable of attending to and processing other information which means they can do the skill without thinking about it so that their mind could be thinking about where are my other teammates, where is the defense going, Uh, what, what can I do next, or what will they do next. Repetition is a powerful agent in our lives, for shaping our lives as well. When we repeat an action over and over, it becomes second nature. And we don't have to spend our day thinking about those things, which frees us us up to think about more important things. As one author put it, 
Even as water carves monuments of stone, so do our thoughts shape our character. What we do is based on our thoughts, and what we do over and over helps us make us into who we are. And doing them around others, especially around children, provides an example for them to follow. As someone once said, your actions speak so loudly, I can't hear your words. Peter found repetition to be helpful in his faith as well. When he was asked to go with a friend of Dorcas, who had died in the next town over from where he was staying, he immediately went with them. Why? When Jesus was called on, he automatically went and did those things as well. So Peter goes and meets a room full of grieving women who showed him all the beautiful uh, pieces of clothing that Dorcas had made, which somehow stirred in Peter a little bit even more sympathy and empathy for this talented woman. Peter sent them all outside and then knelt down beside Dorcas and told her to rise. And she did. Where had Peter ever seen or heard such an outrageous thing being done? The answer is that he'd been in the company of Jesus, who had raised a little girl from the dead, who had raised his friend Lazarus from the dead, and then he himself was raised on Easter morning. Before Jesus left them after his resurrection, he told his disciples that they would do even greater things than he did. Peter took Jesus at his word and followed the example of Christ in attempting to do such an unthinkable action as telling a woman to rise from the dead and to believe that in Christ's name that it could be done. And Christ's example is there for us to follow as well. Now maybe nobody recently has asked you to come to somebody's house and help raise a woman from the dead. Nobody's asked me that either. Thank goodness. But there have been other similar requests of each of us that have been life-giving. We recently finished receiving donations towards the One Great Hour of Sharing. And that sounds nice. We give to a, a charity. But think about the things that have been done with those dollars. Some of our One Great Hour of Sharing money has gone towards... Uh, disaster assistance. And we have a PDA, the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance Group, that deals with those who've had hurricanes down south and wildfires out west, but also has teams in Eastern Europe helping Ukrainian refugees find shelter and food. Some of our one great hour of sharing money goes towards hunger relief, which is used for direct food relief and education and teaching others sustainable living techniques. Our offerings also go to the self-development of people, where we invest in ways for those in poverty to begin lifting themselves up. In Belize, in Central America, for example, we've helped a group of farmers in a co-op with the intent of manufacturing cereal from the grains that they raise. In Rwanda, our grant money will be used to assist with agricultural projects, handicapped projects, water supply, and electricity, according to Self-Development of People guidelines. Closer to home, the Self-Development Group has given a grant to the Dexter Linwood Cordon section of Detroit, which is an eight-block section of the city that has 256 parcels of, parcels of land, which include about 10% of them being vacant lots. The money given will transform many of those empty lots into urban gardens and community green space. The residents will be able to grow food and also have an aesthetic upgrade that will provide space for members and residents to come together. Through our donations, we have been able to profoundly change the lives of many who are hurting or hungry and needy around the globe. We take the offering every year we repeat it every year, not sitting back and saying, well, we did so much good last year, I guess we don't need to give this year. We repeat it each and every year. We continue to give food to our food pantry over and over again because 
hunger hasn't been alleviated. People come to our church on a regular basis seeking food when their own resources have reached that point. We don't eliminate their need by giving them a couple of days worth of groceries. It might not change their life, but that's not the point. The example we've been given is to be Christ's presence along the way to whomever needs it. When some us, someone asks us for food, we give it. When someone needs a shoulder to lean on, we offer it. When someone needs a word of encouragement, we give it without reservation. It's our mission to be Christ's presence to others, and the way we learn how to do it is through repetition. We practice our faith over and over again so that it'll become who we are. In worship, we announce on a regular basis that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven, so that when we say it over and over, sooner or later it's going to mean more to us, and it's going to become a part of who we are. We meet at the table on a regular basis to be remembered that we are Easter, redeemed people. And we pray the Lord's Prayer every week. Why say the Lord's Prayer so often? One, po one poet put it this way. I cannot pray the Lord's Prayer and even once say I. I cannot pray the Lord's Prayer and even once say my. Nor can I pray the Lord's Prayer and not pray for others, and when I ask for daily strength, I must include sisters and brothers. For others are included in each and every plea. From the beginning to the end of it, it does not once say me. That's why we say it over and over again, because it reminds us that following Christ is about showing care and concern for others and living as selflessly as we can. We practice and rehearse over and over again what Christ taught us and remind ourselves that in Christ we are more than we ever could be on our own. We have a loving and caring Lord and our responsibility is to act that way toward others, even when we don't feel like it. It's been said that to become an expert in something, you need to spend about 10,000 hours doing it. Of course, you need to have the talent to be able to do whatever that thing is, which is why I stopped playing football uh, in junior high school. You have to have the talent for it. I could play 10,000 hours and still not be good at it. But Tony Rice was a mediocre quarterback for Notre Dame, and before his senior se season, sports writers and fans wondered whether or not Notre Dame could possibly make a run at the national title with his inaccurate passing. What they didn't know was that Coach Lou Holtz had bought Tony a dartboard and given him the instructions to throw darts at it for an hour a day, every day. Rice didn't see how that was going to help his passing, but he did as his coach said. Pretty soon he began to find that his passes were thrown with more accuracy and with more confidence both of which resulted in them winning the national title that year. Rubenstein, the great musician, said, if I omit practice one day, I notice it. If two days, my fellow musicians notice it. If three days, the public notices it. Mary Lou Retton, the Olympic gold medalist, said, here's what it takes to be a complete gymnast. Someone should be able to sneak up and drag you out of bed at midnight push you out onto some strange floor, and you should be able to do your entire routine sound asleep in your pajamas. Without one mistake, that's the secret. It's got to be a natural reaction. Blindly following the example of another is not helpful, because that trains us not to use our heads, and our Lord doesn't want that. He doesn't want unthinking robots. <gasps> Instead, he wants us to go all, through all three stages of training where we consider cognitively the example he set and then to associate his teaching with the actions that we want to do. And finally, to practice, practice, practice so that we intentionally become like him. We're called upon to follow the example of Christ and we do so 
over and over again practicing our faith. We come to church. We recite the Lord's Prayer. We give to causes like the One Great Hour of Sharing. And we pray and sing hymns and read from the Bible and try to live as Christians each in our own way so that what we do isn't just being a copycat but results in authentically faithful and loving acts. That's why we come to church regularly, to practice here so that it becomes a habit when we go out there. So come here as often as you can so that we can practice together the things Christ did. Let's encourage each other so that when we go out from here, we will then automatically do likewise. You will do even greater things than I have done, said Christ to his disciples. So let's look for opportunities to make a difference and trust that what he promised for each of us will be true. The psalmist wrote uh, Psalm 122, and we read it today, where it says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. This is our training facility for faith, where we hear and learn about our faith and practice it here so that we can go and be Christ's presence out there. So let's go, team. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, help us to learn more of how you lived and loved so that we may go and live and love that way as well. Remind us that every day there are opportunities to show others how your love for us has made a difference. May we see your example of love for others and then practice our own unique way of emulating you. For we pray this in our Lord's name. Amen. Let us use the words of the Apostles' Creed to state our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. He is risen. Welcome to this fourth Sunday of Easter and to this day when we also honor all the mothers here. I came across a song this past year and as soon as I heard it I thought, oh I've got to write down those lyrics because someday Mother's Day will come and I want to be able to share it. So it's by a group called Shepherd and it's entitled Thank You. It goes like this. This is uh, the son writing his song to his mother. When I couldn't fall asleep, you'd read to me and lay there at my side. If I grazed my knee from climbing trees, you'd comfort me as I cried. You made my lunches every day, and though you were running late, you would walk me all the way to school, building castles out of sand, way too young to understand that life was easier because of you. So I want to thank you for making me half as good as you. As I get older, I understand what I put you through. I misbehaved, I made mistakes, but you never turned away. So I want to thank you for all that you do. Well, there's more to the song than that, uh, but I better not sit, read any more. I'm getting kind of choked up. But much of who we are is because of you moms. So we want to say thank you. And, uh, the deacons have put together a little gift for the moms in the congregation. Uh, please pick it up on your way out. It's a uh, salt scrub. So if you've been out in the, in the uh, garden digging and stuff and your hands are dirty, this is a, a beautifully, wonderful smelling way of getting clean. I have a few uh, announcements I'd like to highlight. The Daisy Row yard sale is coming up this coming Saturday. It'll be from 9 to 2. We encourage you to stop by and check out all the goodies that will be for sale. They'll also be offering lunch again, so be sure and stop by and grab a bite. Our second quarter local mission is the Community's Little Helpers, where Kristen Reinertsen from our congregation leads youngsters in learning the value of service from an early age. It's a very noble mission and is worth our support. So if you feel so inclined, Add some to your offering and mark it that it's for the second quarter mission. Manna House this Tuesday will be offering their $5 spaghetti dinner at the Newton Presbyterian Church. Uh, it begins at 5 p.m. Remember, it's takeout only. And next Sunday is Music Sunday. We're looking forward to hearing from all of our choirs as they sing and play. But it's not too late to volunteer if you want to offer some of your own special music. So see Kay about that. Well, now we have a special dedication. Would anyone who, is, who has been in the friendship circle please come forward? Right on to the front here. Good, good group of you here today. Thanks for coming. Uh, the Friendship Circle was formed by my predecessor, Roberta Piccini, back in 1989. The church was growing and there were so many new faces in church and in the fellowship hall that Roberta asked some women, some young mothers, if they would form a group that would be responsible for looking to see for new faces uh, and be friendly to them here in church, over in the fellowship hall, hence the Friendship 
part of their name of the Friendship Circle. And over the years, they've welcomed in numerous new members. As time went on, they gathered monthly to plan, plan family outings and then fundraisers, ministries of care and social get-togethers. So there have been hay rides at Ideal Farms, Halloween parties back here at the church. There have been dances and bunco nights, fish and chips dinners, programs at the homestead for its residents, their prayer shawl ministry, and cookie batter sales, and more. They've contributed thousands of dollars to our church budget and had a blast while they were doing it. The camaraderie of this group will never be forgotten by those who participated, and the ministry of this church has been given a smiling face and a welcoming embrace to many by these women over those 30-some years. Over time, though, their children have grown up, moved away, gotten married, had kids, and many in the group have retired and moved away as well. The pandemic was the final nail in the coffin. Just a couple of weeks before we shut down, this group put on a really fun bunco night. But then we couldn't get together anymore, and with a few more moving away during that time, it became apparent that it was time to close this chapter on our church's life. They had some money left in their treasury, so they decided to make one last difference. The candlesticks we've been using have become really worn out over the years, so they bought new ones with a new oil system that doesn't drip wax. They're beautiful. Put one over here. And they have some subtle engraving on the inside here that honors the Friendship Circle from 1989 to 2020. Thank you all for the gifts of your service and caring and sharing over the years. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the women of the Friendship Circle over the past 30-some years, for the welcome they have given to so many, for the laughter they've shared amongst themselves at meetings and events, the creativity they've shown in putting on events like the mother-daughter banquets, the Halloween games played, the variety of cookie doughs offered, and the fun they both had amongst themselves and offered to the rest of us. We thank you for the support they've given each other through the ups and downs of life. We're grateful for the support they've given this church through funding and prayers and programs and loyalty. Lord, as their time comes to a close, may the memories made become jewels of happiness in each heart, and the friendships made continue to be a precious support in the years to come. Thank you for these candlesticks that will provide light and a glow of comfort to our worship services going forward. We dedicate them to you now in honor of the love the Friendship Circle has offered over the years. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all. You may go back and have a seat. Go ahead. It's okay. Goes away. There are two important implications for this church without a friendship circle around to uh, do what they have done. Uh, the first implication is that it's daisy row chains gain because those who remain from the, who were in the friendship circle, many of them have joined the daisy row, so we're glad about that. Uh, but the second is we no longer have a group that is dedicated towards looking for those who are new in the congregation and intentionally going and being friendly. So that now falls on all of us. So let's be sure and do that, okay? Let's take some time now to offer our prayers to God and thanks for the many blessings that we have 
as well as offering our prayers for those that we know have need. Uh, afterwards, there will be a pastoral prayer and then the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, as the Easter season continues, may we hold your resurrection in our minds as a guide and a hope. May the seeds of this season of new life yield growth and maturity in our faith. May the presence of your spirit be a faithful friend and a steady presence in each of our lives. Righteous God, in a world torn by war, keep us from hate that hardens our hearts. May our leaders be led by your wisdom and may hearts be moved in the direction of peace with justice. And God of all mothers, stand with us as we celebrate those who have mothered, those who are mothering, and those who will mother. Abide with us as we honor those who found ways to give life, have taught us how to love, and who have shown us how to live faithfully. Bless all mothers who hold and heal, who shelter and protect, who encourage others to live up to their full potential of their humanity. Bless all mothers this day. And watch over those we know of who need your healing touch and celebrate with those who have cause for joy. Hear us now as we bring to you Mr. Piper's that his surgery will be successful with thanks that his tumor is not cancerous. We pray for Irene and continued prayers for the Bambrick family. We pray for the Schaefer McLean family and Sylvia and Harry and Bonnie. We offer our prayers of thanks for the birth of baby Jesse Blaine to Caitlin and Ian, and our birthday good wishes to Betty Willis's good friend Karen. We pray for Mackenzie and Johnny, Lewis and Anne, who's recovering from surgery and awaiting test results. We offer our prayers for Michelle and Pam and a speedy recovery for Mama Marlene after her kidney surgery. Be with Joanne and Dave and Marion and Heidi and Bob and Caroline and Joan Douglas and Christopher Gore and all those we have mentioned in the silence. Hear our prayers and be with them all even as you are with each of us. Help us to know your presence and to feel it and to move in the directions you would have us go. So we offer these prayers in Jesus' name, saying the prayer he taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As Christ followers, let us offer from the bounty he has provided to us some of our gifts to further his ministry in the world. Please use one of the ways listed in the bulletin to make your offering. Thank you.
we offer our time, talents, and service in your name as a response to your love and grace. May our offerings help those who are hungry, poor, thirsty, and vulnerable. May our service be done in love and gratitude. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please take a moment to greet each other. Let us go now in peace. Let us go in the name of our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 And a crisscross. And we go to the left.